What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Today we are on the 23rd of March and we're having a look at the accelerometer. A nice little device, a nice little chip that you have in your phone nowadays. Um, iPhone, Android, we pretty much have that everywhere. And we can use it to detect the tilt of your phone. Now, um, the most common use of accelerometer is to detect shakes. So here's one. And I use that to transition into my other scene using, again, a callback, just like we like. Alright, so as I like to do every single episode, we're going through the scene setup right now, which is it's just that. <laughs> there's nothing really working in this scene. Uh, well, not, not working, but there's nothing really impressive in the scene. Uh, it's just visual, but there is the fade manager from the second episode of Monk March, which is going, going to help me give me a, a fade in and a fade out effect. Um, the whole purpose of this episode is going to be revolving around the accelerometer test script. So the whole purpose of this script is, as soon as the game starts, we're going to hook ourselves up to our accelerometer script, which will let us know if we're currently shaking the device or not. Um, and when it is, we're going to run a callback. Also, if we ever destroy the script, then we don't want to be listening for that callback anymore. So we remove ourselves from that event. Now, um, once we do shake, well, I'm going to call in the fade manager, and that fade manager will eventually change the scene and then do a fade in again. So it's a bunch of you could almost say like spaghetti code, but um, what I really want to show over here is that this is how we're going to be using our accelerometer today. So what I want to show right here is that we're going to have an event and the, this event will trigger whatever you want it to trigger. So let's head over to our accelerometer script. Right now we have nothing. So this one is a little bit different than the gyroscope. For some reason, when you're on the gyroscope, you can go ahead and say something like, so system info support gyroscope, that work for gyroscope, but for me, support accelerometer, even though I have one in my phone, it doesn't work. Don't ask me why it doesn't work. Maybe it's because I'm using a remote. Maybe it would work if I had to build it on my phone. Um, but I had no success with this. So instead what I did is we simply grabbed the input and uh, we called it a day. All right, so TLDR, what you need if you want to access the accelerometer input is simply this. Input.acceleration, and that's it. So. <laughs> If I run this, I'm quickly going to go run this in the game so you see exactly what kind of input you're going to be getting. And we'll go into the difference in between that and also the gyroscope. So let me open this on my remote. And here it is on my phone. Now, if you check down in the console down below, and I'm going to put that right on the flat floor. Now, as you can see, I'm going to rotate this thing around just a little bit like that. You're going to notice that sometimes we get a peak in the console. Sometimes it says minus one in the console, but sometimes it, it doesn't if I move it slowly enough. And that's the big difference in between the gyroscope and the accelerometer. The gyroscope itself always gave you a rotation. It also had like a nice knowledge of where is north. So we had to point it towards that direction to get a perfect minus one. Um, but with this one, it's quite different. As the name entails, this is for acceleration purpose. So I'm going to get a lot of different value if I just move my phone around like this, like a wand. I'm casting some kind of magic right now. You get a lot of different values. So from that point on, you have to decide what you're going to do with that value. The most common use of the accelerometer, um, say in all the iPhones and all Android devices as well, all the newest one, is detecting a shake. So that's what we'll be doing today. We're going to be detecting a shake. Now back in my code, I'm going to wipe everything we had and create ourselves an instance, just like we've done with the audio manager, just like we've done with the gyroscope. I like to have this simply because I want to be calling this from pretty much anywhere. Um, it's equivalent of singleton, really. So having that done, um, we have our instance. We can call the accelerometer from anywhere. What are we going to need? We're going to need all these nice values over here. Um, these are based off a thread that I've read on Unity Forum. Let me just pull that one up. Here it is. So the thread is called iPhone shaking. And those people went through and actually did the test of what looked good, what didn't look good. Um, the simple answer could have been this. And it could have worked fine, but this tend not to give the best result. Uh, meanwhile, Raf and also Brady over here, they got a way better, um, well, a little bit more complex way to do things, but it turned out a lot better. So here is the transcript in C sharp of what we're gonna be doing. We're using all these values. I've marked this one as serializable simply because this is where you're gonna be deciding, okay, is that a big shake? Do you need like a small shake? What kind of shake? Like what's the force that you need? So this is why this one is uh, serializable, also known as editable in the inspector. Now in their private voice start, here is what they've done. The only thing I can add on top of this is the shake detection threshold. Um, 
they actually multiply it by itself so they can have a value they can use square magnitude on instead of using just magnitude because you don't want to be running a square root in a update. That's an expensive operation. So instead, they're going to be running the squared magnitude, which is much more smarter. Now, speaking of that update, here it is. So we're grabbing the acceleration every single frame. We are doing a lerp in between the previous one, so the previous frame, and also the current one and you get the delta in between the two. If that delta is above a certain point, so if it, if it goes beyond our square magnitude, by the way, just remember this is uh, this is not square root, this is squared magnitude. So you're not actually running a square root operation on top of this. Um, it always gets me confused. If you wanna be running a square root and have it be expensive, you just type in magnitude. But if it's a squared magnitude, then you don't go through the square root operation. And this is why you have to multiply the shake detection threshold so it matches these value. Now, if we do have something in the unshake, let's call that method. Okay. All right, so quickly going back inside of our test, when I start my game, I will be hooking myself up to the shake event on the accelerometer. And then if we ever destroy the script, then it's gonna be of course removed. As soon as I fade, I'm going to start a fade out when my fade out is over after one second, it's going to run another action after uh, the fade, and that fade will start a scene. So you can imagine it as being I shake, there's a fade, we change scene, and then there's another fade in after that. That's how it works in the code. Is that how it's going to work on the device? We will see. Okay, so nothing's happening. If I shake this, wow, it worked. Isn't that amazing? And expected. That's how we meddle around with the accelerometer. Now do know that it's much different than the gyroscope because the accelerometer doesn't have a idea of its rotation in the real world. It only has um, what's being affected by gravity right now and also that's it actually. Yeah, it's being affected by gravity. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to end this one here. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Patreon, um, subscribe on the YouTube channel, like the video, share the video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.